The word of God is found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 to 12. The word of God is found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 to 12. Let us read it together. Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to Him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy, report, or letter, supposed to have come from us, saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things? And now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan, displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs and wonders, and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. Amen. Holy God, our Father, we have come before you to give our thanksgiving offerings. We pray for those families who have given their thanksgiving offerings that you would give them the fullness of your grace and your blessings. We pray that all those who have given their earnest thanksgiving offerings may be blessed and receive your grace in their spirits and in the spirits of their family members. We pray for all those who have given their, their thanksgiving offerings to you. We pray that you would be with them and accompany them by your grace and your blessings. Please help all these family members who have given their grace, who have given their offerings to you. Please accompany them by your grace and your blessings. Please be with all these families. We pray that to all those who have given their thanksgiving offerings, although we can't mention, we cannot mention every one of their names, we pray that you give your equal blessings and grace to all those who have given their thanksgiving offerings. And we also pray for those who will in the future give their thanksgiving offerings, that you will continue to give your grace and your blessings in the name of Jesus. We pray for all these things. And just as Jesus said, since you have been saved, since you have been healed, do not tell this to anyone, but offer the thanksgiving offerings as commanded by Moses and testify to your healing and your signs. And so, as Jesus said these words, we pray we may not be ungrateful for all the signs and mercy you have given us, but we pray we may do this in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Amen. May all those who have given their earnest thanksgivings offerings may be blessed to the fullness in the name of Jesus Christ forever. Amen. And so, there is a chance that we may forget about the grace and all the wonderful love of God we have received. So we must not miss the opportunity to give our honest thanksgiving offerings to the Lord. We must always seize every opportunity to give our thanksgiving offerings. There will be many people who have been healed, so we must beware and be cautious of those, just like in the Gospel accounts, about how they were healed, all the paralyzed were healed by Jesus, but they did not give their appropriate thanksgiving to God in the name of Jesus. So we must make sure we do the careful we do the careful uh, effort so that we give our thanks to God. We must make the particular efforts to give our thanksgiving offerings to the Lord. We must make every effort not to miss this opportunity to give our thanksgiving offerings to the Lord.
and to those who at least they don't have enough money, they would at least uh, offer a pair of doves and pigeons to the Lord God. So we must not forget the cautions that the Word of God cautions us about. We must make sure we give all the, all the offerings that we have the opportunity to give. So we must not be ungrateful for the miracles and signs that we have been given from God and we must make the appropriate thanksgiving offerings so we can continue in these miraculous signs that have been given us. And so the people of the world will, get, will forget about the miracles done by God. And so we must make the great effort not to forget about these mercies and signs given to us by God. It is because, it is because we are ungrateful and we are unwilling to give our offerings uh, that, that they do not continue to see the signs and miracles of God. So God continues to teach this to us. So what would be the state of our souls if we persist in being unwilling to give our offerings and so express our thanks? So although the situations may be difficult for us, we must not make the excuse uh, not to give our thanksgiving offerings. So you will all, you will all willingly uh, buy, med buy medicine from the pharmacy, so you must make your own individual and thanksgiving willing offerings to the Lord, so that you will, so that you will fully possess the miracles that have been given you by the grace of God. Now let us sing the hymn together. Let us sing the hymn together. Hymn 200.
John chapter 4, verse 24. We have read it before in the previous day, so let us read it again. John chapter 4, verse 24. John chapter 4, verse 24. Let us read it at least three times. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. This is the command of God that he commands us. This is the word of Jesus Christ given to us. So those who worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth because God is spirit. We must worship in the spirit and in truth. So God is spirit. Since God is spirit, we must have a spiritual qualification. We must have spiritual requirements so that we can meet with God. We can meet with God in spirit. So God is spirit. And yet we must not regard God in any physical way, in any physical or substantial way, for this is not the way that we meet with God. So there was a new book that has been that has come out, the parables of Jesus Christ. So the parables of Jesus Christ are 50 in total, and this is described in the book. And about five have been removed. So in total, it is 45 parables discussed in the book. So these are all very important, and we cannot afford to miss these 45. So all those under the law, all those under the law that is under the law and the prophets uh, understood about the parables given by God and how much trials and challenges they had faced and how much ordeals they had faced. But even despite all this, there was a hindrance from them coming completely to God. For these were only parables given by the word of God. And Jesus said, those which you are uh, still dealing with, that is in terms of the law and the prophets, these were only parables of the realities that are in heaven. So these, uh, these parables have been re-explained and re-spoken by Jesus. And the people in the other Christian churches will not know about the true essence of these parables. And these interpretations given by other churches will go in very strange and very peculiar ways in their interpretation. And so the content found in this new published book will be the first of its kind in all of publication. So what did Jesus say? So Jesus spoke, it says in the gospel accounts that Jesus did not speak of the truth at that time, but he had only spoken in parables. But these were the distinctive parables spoken by Jesus. Although even in these parables, Jesus spoke the truth. But before the Holy Spirit had come to all believers, he did not speak in the truth by the Holy Spirit. For Jesus said, you are not ready enough for to understand the word of truth. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth. So all the law and the prophets, and then the parables of Jesus, and then after that came the truth spoken by the Holy Spirit. So there are these three stages by which God speaks. So all these, 
all these are very important and the book is describing about the parables of Jesus Christ and, and uh, the parables spoken by pastors in sermons are of, a death, of an other kind but these are the parables of Jesus Christ Jesus said I do not speak of my own accord but the Father commanded me what to say and what to speak God commands me what to say and what to do this is what Jesus said to us so when Jesus spoke he only spoke he only spoke in parables as is found in the gospel accounts so at that time Jesus could not speak in the truth but it could only speak in parables to us so where this whether this was uh, speaking other ways Jesus spoke in parables at this time for the law was given through Moses but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ so Jesus spoke about grace and truth but this was different from spoke as was spoken by the law and the prophets and so this was a, a transgressive progress of stages by which God spoke first the law and then the prophets and then the parables of Jesus and then the truth spoken once the Holy Spirit came to us but this is the particular stage of the parables of Jesus what was the motive that Jesus spoke to us in parables so this is what explained in the book so we can talk about the content found in the Bible so whenever we look at the Bible we should easily and readily speak about the true content of the Bible but pastors and ministers are not sufficiently explaining about this and this is a great shame so of all the people Jesus had called 12 to him he had called he did not call just anyone but to those he had desired he had called to him those he had desired so that they will be with him so that they will be with him so so they they, they would be with him and they would be with him to preach the gospel just as Jesus had done and that they would perform miracles and signs just as Jesus had done Lord, this is found in Mark chapter 3 onwards so Jesus talked about these parables to his disciples so we must be the disciples of Jesus more specifically like the 12 disciples whether we are Matthew whether we are Simon Peter whether we are John or James we must reflect the model of faith and action that they had and be like the disciples of Jesus we must be like them and their model of faith must be manifested in us but there are those who do not understand the Word of God and they serve God in their own way this is what Judas Iscariot had done although he, he had heard the words of Jesus he he tried to do uh, the service to God in his own way he tried to be very diligent in his own way but not in accordance with the way spoken by Jesus so many of the people around Jesus had persecuted and opposed Jesus and so they had plotted together how they would kill Jesus this is what is found in the gospel accounts they planned together the Pharisees and the Herodians how they would kill Jesus but but Judas Iscariot he had followed Jesus as a disciple he had heard Jesus wherever Jesus went and Jesus said oh I can't afford not to protect Jesus in my own way but this kind of way of thinking is a very flawed a flawed way but he had great misunderstandings of Jesus in a way this is very blameless but this is a great misunderstanding of Jesus for he seeked his own way to serve Jesus he seeked a way that is a way of man uh, even though Jesus was persecuted and when Jesus was persecuted and about to be sentenced to death under the, the law courts of Pontius Pilate he seeked his own method to rescue Jesus and as a result as a result they had handed Jesus over to Pontius Pilate to be sentenced to death so 
in order to turn a person into a slave, you must sell that person for several coins of silver. So Judas Iscariot sought his own method. He had sold Jesus. He had sold Jesus as a slave and they had purchased Jesus. Jesus became a slave. So, a sinner means actually a slave. It means somebody sold to slavery. It means that one is in the, sla the state of slavery. And so they had handed Jesus over to the authorities to be sentenced to death. So Judas Iscariot was a very, was a very uh, well learned in the Roman law and Roman governmental law. And so he had relied on it. So he had relied on Roman law to finally hand Jesus uh, over to the authorities. He had his own ideas. They, he thought by his own ideas that they would stop persecuting Jesus if he followed this way of Roman law. And this is the way that Judas Iscariot tried to help Jesus in his own particular way. If, if by any means, even if it was meant to deceive Jesus, he desired to do it so that he could somehow help Jesus in his own way. And he thought that although it may be uncomfortable for Jesus for a while, I must use my own method to protect Jesus. So this is the thought of Judas Iscariot. But this is this might not be a lie that Jesus that Judas Iscariot had within his heart. He may have been innocent in his own way of thinking. Yet the rest of the disciples had fled, and Judas Iscariot saw what had finally happened. He he had mourned and he had wailed. He could not get rid of his guilt. And there were many of the disciples uh, tried to run away. They came out of their senses. Some fled naked. But Judas Iscariot was so convicted that he had followed Jesus everywhere he went. And uh, he had cried out, This man is innocent! This man is innocent! What are you doing? So this is what Judas Iscariot had seen when Jesus was, Jesus, Jesus was sentenced to death and carried to the Roman authorities. He, he overseen, Judas Iscariot oversaw everything that had finally happened to Jesus because he finally saw that his own methods and own thinking went in the wrong way and then he was filled with guilt when he saw what had happened to Jesus and then he did, uh, he did what was very detrimental. He did uh, that which was great, uh, we can say, rubbish a very garbage way of thinking and he had finally entered into the place of rubbish and this is none other than the place of hell so he did not love God in the way that was prescribed by the word of Jesus but he had hold to his own ideas his own man-centered ideas so we have been t I have been talking decades about not to serve God by your own ideas but the way of the word of God so we must all read this new book that has been published and then we will know about the true concepts and ideas of what must be done and follow and we will know the proper way to preach sermons and the way not to preach and we can firmly differentiate the correct way to preach sermons this is very important this is not the way of man but the way of the preaching of Jesus as he had preached his parables and so this is a very special book that has been published for all to read so let us all read it and so all all the congregation all lay people must read this book and then it can be fully understood in terms with the truth of God and then the truth of God will continue to overflow so I exhort all to read it and some people will hear these exhortations and they will still say in their hearts hey but I am still ignorant I don't seek to know that much and I, I don't I'm not that greedy but if you have this kind of attitude it will be useless 
if you desire to be a God, having received the Word of God, and you desire to be used by God, then you must make the determination. Let us say together, Lord, please use me. Lord, please use me. And you say this, and yet there are many who are actually afraid of being used by God. How many are there who are afraid of being used by God? So we have received baptism in immersion, and we do not follow uh, the ways of the flesh and its ideas of the flesh, and we give up, we give up the ideas and will of the flesh, and we bury it under water, having received baptism in immersion. And now we are completely transferred over to Jesus Christ. So to, if you have really received baptism in immersion, if you have received baptism in immersion, that is by the Holy Spirit, you cannot not be but regenerated. You will be regenerated. So you must be a good vessel to be used by God. And this vessel will follow you all the days of your life. But you do not, you are not to follow the desires of the vessel itself, but you are to follow spirit. That is, follow the Holy Spirit. You must receive power by the Holy Spirit, the sufferings of Christ by the Holy Spirit. You must receive the Word of God by the Holy Spirit the word of Christ by the Holy Spirit so those who have received baptism in immersion will do this but those who have received this baptism as a ritual will not know these things so those who are in the flesh will become nothing but an enemy of God those who follow the flesh and its desires are an enemy of God so those who follow the flesh cannot please God for the thought of the flesh is death but the thought of the spirit is life and peace so those who are under the flesh cannot please God and they will not please God those who belong to the flesh are not people belonging to Christ but if you have received the Holy Spirit then just as the Holy Spirit raised the Lord Jesus from the dead then he who dwells in you will also give life to your spirit through the Holy Spirit who also raised the Lord Jesus from the dead as is found in Romans chapter 8 so the reason that we believe is to gain eternal life so you diligently study, study the scriptures because that in them you think that you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. People seek to follow God and serve God by their own ideas and their own conviction, and this leads to perishment. You must decide to follow the will of God by the Holy Spirit, and this is what God exhorts to us. So we are those who are taught to wait and prepare for God on the coming on the last day. So we will all with our voice say, Lord, please come, O oh Lord. But then, and then our, our elder generation will all pass away, our our, our, our fathers, our grandfathers will all pass away and yet the Lord Jesus is yet to come and because of man's life expectancy all the generations will pass away for sure. However, the Lord it's preparing all things for his own coming he is continuing to he is continuing to prepare for his personal coming and then on the day on that day comes when when the Lord comes he will take those who belong to him with him so that they will be with him forever and this is the true word of God there is great blessing for those who are taken by the Lord so that they will be with him forever in the kingdom he will take them so that they will be with him in the air and there are many people who may not have sought the Lord and since they had died their spirits were not saved <laughs> 
And you may think that those who do not believe, uh, it is very unfortunate that they were not saved. And you will think about your relatives, your uncles and your aunts, maybe even your fathers, and they may not have been saved. And you're very sad that they have, may not have been saved. And this is the issue that Catholics, Roman Catholics fall into. So they pray for their family members and they even teach that there is a resurrection even for those who haven't believed. So this is a fabricated lie that Roman Catholics speak about. This is a teaching that is not found in the Gospels. Who of your descent, who of your ancestors who have not believed can ever hope for the resurrection and not go to hell just because you pray for them and they come out of some purgatory? They will never be saved in their spirits unless they physically believe in Jesus. We are talking about those who wait uh, willingly for the Lord Jesus and they will wait until the Lord's coming. But both for those who do not believe and do not prepare for His coming, will, will not see Him come and they will not be taken to be with Him and there will be great ordeal and tribulation for those who are not taken by the Lord. And so we are those who strive to continue our noble and mildable life of faith. But it will be, it is the question of whether you truly have lived an exemplary and pleasing life of faith in the eyes of God. This is the question. And some people may have become corrupt and they fall away from their faith in Jesus. And even though they may have received baptism in immersion, they should maintain their faith continually but their life of faith since they received baptism in immersion they should have buried all the ideas and thoughts of the flesh and the dispositions of the flesh when they received baptism in immersion but they still maintain it there were many people among us who do this so when you teach your children hey what what are you doing not obeying your mother your teachings of your mother and following your own way so it is a similar thing for us please listen to the mother of your children this is what we say to our children when we discipline them so how hurtful it is for the children when we are when parents rebuke their children so even when I had dealt with my children my grandchildren you must look at your I taught my grandchildren, you must look at your teacher's lips, you must concentrate with your eyes on your teacher's lips and focus on their lips and then you will fully concentrate and understand what has been spoken out of your teacher's lips. So this is what I taught my grandchildren. So Matthew chapter 5 says that Jesus listened to the words and teachings of Jesus. They had concentrated on the words of Jesus. This is what is found in Matthew chapter 5 in, the, in some translations. And then Jesus opened his lips to speak and then the disciples heard those words that come from the opened lips of Jesus. We must focus on the lips of Jesus and then we will succeed in our faith. If we do not, there will be a great hindrance and perishment in our faith. There will be many hindrances and opposition to our faith if we do not follow these commanded ways. You will lead to great frustration if you do not follow, if you do not follow the, the commandments of Jesus. And some people will be, uh, will be very lacking in their willpower and the earnest desire actually to follow the commanded ways of Jesus, the ways of Jesus. And uh, do not seek anything new for the water, the fresh water given you is the same water that is given the previous day. Do not expect anything new. So there may be, there may be uh, several brands given by famous brand companies, but there may be small, there may be some small var variations, but they are, and it results as a total of 30 different editions of the brands, but you will buy them all. But to be honest, they are actually the same thing, but do not seek uh, anything new and be frustrated if it all sounds the same thing but this is all the same constant truth 
호텔 식당에서 이렇게 그 딱. And so I went to a, a restaurant in a hotel. So I saw the price for the food, and I saw that it was several, several tens of dollars, and uh, there were different prices, but they are actually all the same water, the same fresh water. So do not do not seek anything new. It is all the same product. It is all the same thing that you consume. So there are many different types of products, but they are actually, although there are slight differentiations, they are all the same product. And so you may try to be clever and think that there may be some slight variations in the details, but this is actually very foolish. They are all actually the same. So the sermons that are preached to you by the Word of God, they are the words that come from the mouth of God, and we should hear them. So that which saves is spirit. The word that is spoken to you are spirit and they are life. The spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The word I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. The spirit gives life, so please hear these words of Jesus. And so it says in verse 2, Brothers, we ask you concerning the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and us being gathered to him. So whether it be, whether it be any, any report, word, or prophecy saying that the day of the Lord has already come, do not, do not ever be, do not ever be unsettled or alarmed, for you do not know when the Lord will actually come. You do not know when the Lord will actually come, so do not be alarmed or do not be unsettled, as is found but in the letter of Second Thessalonians. So we must not be unsettled and we must not be misled. So we must do the, the duty of preparing and waiting for the Lord. And this is what we must do. We must say Amen. Amen. And just do our duty to prepare and to wait for Him. And so we are only hoping, only hoping for the Lord to come. And this is the great joy we have. We only joyfully and wait for joyfully and gladly wait for the lord we must not be unpatient or frustrated or greatly complaining or grumbling that the lord is not coming and we say i'm so tired when is he coming you can prepare but i'm give up i want to give up i don't want to do it anymore we do not say it in this way we must patiently wait and wait until the lord comes we must continue to wait and wait and wait until he comes we will wait while we are in paradise and then when the lord comes he will bring us out of paradise there will be no time but he will bring us out of paradise so that we can be with him and it will come in a flash there will be no time to spend he will come all things will happen in a flash in the twinkling of an eye and it is when the last times comes that he will come again when the last final times come then he will come again so even if an angel deceives us we must not be deceived be deceived for the lord will surely come at his appointed time and so in the same way that we continue to connect uh, the beads of a necklace we just continue to wait and wait patiently for the Lord's coming we must not we must not be impatient or grumble or complain but we must patiently wait for the promised coming of the Lord and do what we must do so we must not be deceived saying that saying that the day of the Lord has already come by any misleading report prophecy or letter we must not be deceived in any way saying that the day of the Lord has already come for this is the message spoken by many false prophets when they say that they are God there are many denominations very peculiar denominations found in South Korea saying that they are the paraclete the Holy Spirit 
and many are actually are funny enough they are very deceived and they follow these denominations that say that a person that a particular leader is uh, the paraclete the holy spirit and they are quite easily misled and you cannot understand why they are so easily misled and they and they wholeheartedly follow these denominations like the new heaven the new earth denomination and there used to be many deacons among us in the church and they had all been ordained by the pastors and yet even they had been misled and they went into those denominations and they were those ordained deacons and they were and they used to belong to our church and then they were misled and they went into such denominations as the new heaven and new earth denomination and so we must remember what the Lord Jesus has said to us for the secret of lawlessness is already at work the secret of lawlessness is already at work but he will not until will not come until until the Lord will finally be revealed and he will overthrow the lawless one with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by the splendor of his coming and he will come in accordance with the walks with the works of satan which works in all kinds of counterfeit miracles signs and wonders that deceive all those who are perishing the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of satan displayed in all kinds of uh, counterfeit miracles signs and wonders they deceive those who are perishing this is those who do not love the truth and they are deceived by lies those who delete to delight in lies and they are deceived by lies and they will perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved so this is the deception that deceives those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be so be deceived and so be saved and they will perish because they refuse to love the truth and so they forfeited themselves being saved and they will not be saved and it says in verse 11 for this reason God sends them a powerful delusion so they will believe the lie and so all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness they have not loved the truth and forfeited their salvation because they loved those lies and delighted in the deception and so it says in John chapter 12 about these things as well the reason that Jesus had come was not to give uh, condemnation but to give salvation because those who do not believe had already been condemned we have been born in this world and all who are born in this world are destined to per destined to perish at least once they will be destined to perish at least once this is because a spirit the spirit uh, came together with the flesh and became a living being the spirit joined with the flesh to become a living being as is found in the book of Genesis and it was revealed to him the way to go into eternal life but they forfeited it by breaking the commandment of God as is found uh, in the book of Genesis chapter 1 2 and 3 and then they forfeited their eternal life because God had commanded of the moment that you eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil you will surely die and you will surely be judged if you eat of this fruit and so it is said in the book of uh, Hebrews that those those who are born in the flesh are destined destined for sure at least to perish once in the flesh it is all it is for sure that those who are in the flesh are destined to, for sure to perish at least once so the reason that Jesus had come was so that we will not perish well, that we will not be destroyed but be saved so those who believe in him will not be judged
but they will gain eternal life. But those who do not believe had already been judged. So we believe and we will not be judged, but those who do not believe have already been condemned. So those who do not believe have already been condemned, already been judged. And some people will say, oh, we still have hope, we still have hope, we can still be chosen by God. But if we believe in Jesus, we have eternal life. If we do not believe, we have already been condemned. And so that is it. The moment we lose the chance to believe, the, the chance has already been ended and we will become a demon. Those who do not believe have been already corrupted in all their minds and their actions, even when they are still in the flesh. So those who do not believe and those who disobey are of the same behavior, of the same fruit, because they have the same influence of corruption. And they who do not believe and been or have been greatly corrupt follow the same way of behavior. It is, it is indistinguishable those who do not believe and those who are already corrupt. So those, even though they are still in the flesh, they do the works of demons because why? They have already been judged. So even though they still breathe in the flesh, you think that, you think that they have lost, if they have lost their opportunity, they are already demons. Even though they are still in the flesh, they are still acting and behaving like demons. Because they have, they have rejected the opportunity to believe. And so, those who are demons, when they are come out of the flesh, they seek that moist, that house that was once very fresh, very moist, very refreshing, that had, that had the, rest, the place of rest, and they desire to go back to the place they had come out of, and they, they will bring, they will return to the house they had left and bring seven more spirits, more worse than itself, and the original condition of the man is even worse the next time round. And then they will be oppressed by the demons, and it will be seven times worse in the suffering for that person's flesh when those seven demons come in. So do not make it useless in your life of faith. Do not make it very fruitless and valueless in your life of faith. Make it worth it. There is no luxury of time and opportunity. In this way, what did God say? So you would think that it was only the devil who gives temptations. For it is those who do not believe in the truth and delight, delight in falsehood and wickedness that God himself will work the deception so they will continue in that deception and that falsehood and that wickedness so it results in their perishing. So as in the case of Saul, you will know that God worked the Spirit of the Lord that came from the Lord to continue to work that great suffering and that great spirit of deception that gave great suffering to Saul and finally led to his destruction and not just to him but also to rest of his to the rest of his sons and they went to their destruction this, this was to all their detriment as is found clearly in the in the account of Saul and even when Saul consulted a spiritist, that, dis that misleading and that deceiving spirit had said, you and your sons will be with me in this land of the dead. For this is not uh, a demon as we understand it when it says in the Bible, evil spirit, but this is a misleading and deceiving spirit. So in a in a in a in a battle we will fight with the enemy enemies will fight with each other and they will kill each other with swords and weapons and so by these weapons like guns or swords they will kill each other and you will kill each other in the flesh and this is what Saul had done he had stabbed himself in the f in the flesh with his sword and in the modern day this can be done with a gun 
And so, and this is this is the sure result of that deceiving spirit that had led Saul to his destruction because he had delighted in falsehood and wickedness, as is found in Second Thessalonians. And so, these are they who opposed opposed the the works of the Holy Spirit. And so this is not just the devil who gave the temptation, but God himself, God himself works the, de the, the deception, the deception because they, dis they refuse to love the truth and so be saved and delighted in falsehood and lies. And so God himself will personally work that deception and is found in the Bible that evil spirit that evil spirit to continue the work in the deception but this is not the sense of evil spirit of demons that we understand so so the subordinates of the devil are the gods of this world so the devil himself is the serpent the dragon the prince of the authority of the air this is the devil but this is distinguished from deceiving spirits and these are distinguished from the gods of this world. So these are all subordinates of the devil. So, God, But God himself sends that deceiving spirit because they refuse to love the truth and so be deceived. And so God himself works those deceiving spirits so that they will, great, they will be greatly, dis, greatly oppressed oppressed by the spirit of falsehood because they refuse to love the spirit of the truth and they will this will result in judgment for the final result of them to die and perish the reason that those the reason that those who have been deceived so they will finally end in the result of their of their uh, destruction so Saul himself was very Saul himself was very humble at the beginning he was very humble as it's found in the Bible accounts and uh, David was elsewhere and as we can see Saul Saul was very humble he had nothing but goodness at the beginning he was somebody who had great praise and admiration from the people and he himself did not desire to be king he did, himself did not desire to be king. And he himself, he himself did not want to be king in the first place, but later he became corrupt because he just refused to love the truth and so be saved. And so, and then he later became corrupt and wanted to be king, this, which led to his destruction. And uh, it was commanded by God through Samuel that Saul was to kill all the Philistines. Saul was to kill all the Philistines. And the Amorites, this was the specific commandment given through Samuel and which Saul was to carry out. He was to destroy all the possessions, all the lambs, the sheep, the flocks, and all the people and the slaves. But Saul had the idea uh, to do otherwise. And then Samuel came and what is this that I'm hearing? I see the bleating and the nailing of the sheep and the coats. What is this? And Saul came up and said, I am doing a good, good deed before the Lord. But Saul said, this is not, Samuel said, this is not a good deed that you are doing. You think you are doing a good deed? So the king, the king has now, you have now rejected the commandment of the Lord. Before you became king, you were very humble. But after you became king, you have now betrayed the commandment of the Lord. So obedience to God, obedience to God is greater than, is greater than offering. Offering, uh, offering sacrifices and listening to the word of the Lord is better than prayer or any other devotion that you think is good. Since you have rejected the commandment of the Lord, 
The Lord has rejected you, O King. And Saul said, Please pray to the Lord for me. I, I thought it would be good to serve God in this way. But since this is going on, what can I do? Please pray to the Lord for me. And Samuel said, I will not do as you ask, since you have rejected the Lord. Since you have rejected the Lord, uh, the Lord has rejected you. And so this is this can happen in a baseball game, in a world famous baseball game. And so the manager, the manager of the baseball game will will look will stand up very tall and he is you think that he is uh and the catcher of the ball and the manager, all the key players, they will uh, hit their head, they will stroke their their hair or their or they will dust their their chest mats and various they will make various signs and these are not meaningless signs but this is a, a clear signal of what we must do this is a clear signal of what we must do so we cannot afford to miss these signs for if we miss these signs there will be great consequences but if we listen to these signs there will be a great home run but but even in the baseball game, we must do as is as it is done by the baseball manager when he gives those very specific signs, and we must do that, and there will be great success in the baseball game. But if we do not hear those signs, it will be very, uh, very detrimental. If God has commanded us to kill, then we must kill. But Saul decided to go in his, his own way. And so you do not know how much Saul, you do not know how much Saul was uh, very, uh, very repentant after he had, after he had uh, uh, sinned. But he had given in to the love and praise of the people to be admired by them. And he thought, he thought it good that he appeased the people for he had given in he had given in to the desires of the people and he had committed a sin and it was detrimental for king saul he confessed this to the prophet samuel he gave in to the people and samuel said you cannot go back for now there will be an evil spirit a deceiving spirit sent to you because you have rejected the commandment of the lord because you have rejected the commandment of the lord and so King Saul gave in to the desires of the people. He had gave in, given in to the desires of the people. And he, he had a great awareness of the desires of the people, what the people thought. And he was ignorant of the thought of God. And so even if you die, and even if you die and you are martyred, you must absolutely receive the love of God. You must re receive the love of God. So for many decades, for over 60 years, I have done the ministry and power and miraculous signs of God and you do not know how much opposition persecution and hate and opposition that I have received trying to do the miraculous signs and wonders and driving out of demons but I knew for sure that this was what God had called me to do and I remember the words spoken by Jesus if the world hates you do not think it's strange before they hated you, they had hated me. And remember, before they hated you, they hated me. And it is, it is a natural thing that the religions of this world will all be more popular than the Christian faith. So, 
Islam or Buddhism will all be more popular than the true Christian faith. So the Christian faith, the Christian faith, the biblical faith is a very, very small fraction, less than 5%. And despite these many, many centuries of uh, Christianity, this has only in, resulted in a number of less than 5%. So, so people, if you give in to the desires and popularity of the people, if you give in to the desires and popularity of the people, you'll be rejected by God. And then God will work a great deception upon you, just like King Saul had done. And some people, some people will clearly hear the words of the Lord spoken in the sermon, but they are stubborn in opening their ears to hearing these words. And although God is clearly speaking by the command of God, people reject it and they do not love it and then God will work that spirit of deception so that it will close their ears and they will no longer hear the words of God. And then they will have that spirit of deception, that spirit of deception to work in their hearts so they will no longer hear the words of God. And so the, the, the angels are those powers, those spiritual powers that are sent, sent to help, that are sent to help, that are sent to help uh, those who inherit salvation. If we have believed in Jesus and received the Holy Spirit, then the angels are sent to help us. Then angels are sent to help us. So, even in my great many decades of ministry, the angels have been sent to me to help me because I will inherit salvation. And I have spiritually seen these with my spiritual eyes. I saw these cherub, what is found, what is called cherub in the Bible, they who have wings. I, I, saw, I saw these uh, in my spiritual vision. They are like just normal people in the vision. They are not particularly spectacular. So before I went to a particular crusade, with, when I was with me and my small family, we were preparing a meal just before the crusade. And then there became an old lady who came to knock in the door to uh, ask for some food. We invited her in to have a, to have a, a bowl of porridge. She suddenly came in. We did not know how she came in. Uh, she came in by some unknown door. So there was a small tray of food. And uh, we did not have much to offer her. But we still enabled her. We still enabled her to come in. We still enabled her to come in. To come in to have the food. We did not reject her. But we enabled her to eat of the porridge. And this was during a time when we were so, so uh, vigilant and honest in our prayers. And so we, uh, we welcomed her. We had asked her to have a, a cup or two of porridge. And so we ate together. And we had all honestly prayed in thanksgiving for the food we were about to eat. But she ate, she ate all that porridge. She ate all the food. And uh, and she gave she gave us she gave a little amount of money to us to pay it back. And so I I asked, actually I we had been preparing a small offering of money to the church. She asked for that money. We gave it to her, and she left. And then we suddenly came to our senses. Why did this old lady come out of this particular door? And so we looked, we looked, we tried to, f we opened the door again, we tried to see her. We asked the surrounding neighbors, did you see the old lady that had just come out from our house? And uh, she had just come out of our house. And we said, no, I didn't see her. We couldn't see her ever again. 
And so in the afternoon at that time, we had all come back to the Pibong Methodist Church, and we will still remember her in our memory. And so there were several groups of people who had who had viciously asked, viciously uh, opposed me as a heretic. That same group of people had honestly asked me and invited me to come to their church to preach. And once they invited me, I preached and did my ministry. And there was a great work of the ministry of God. It was fantastic. And we could connect it back to the old lady who had asked for the food, for the food and the offerings. And ever since then, I have, I, me and my family have had nothing but good food. People have been serving me, and I have never been in short of good food ever again. So where did I see that old lady who had come to me at that time? And so in the train station near the countryside, so in the in the train station near the countryside, and so I had bought the I had purchased the ticket to go back to Seoul from the from the train station in the in the countryside. I met a I met a similar resembling lady and said, "Hey, uh, you, do you, hey, I do not, ha hey, old man, hey, young man." Do you have any money? I do not have any money. So I said, okay, okay, old lady, I'll give you some money. Since you don't have any money, I'll give you this money so that you can take it for your train. And then that old lady got got the money that I gave her, that I offered her. She bought the ticket and she went to the train. And then suddenly, and then suddenly uh, somebody came up to me, if, if you had bought that ticket for that old lady, she would have entered into the, the train. But why did she go into that train? And so I looked back to see if she was still there. But that old lady, she was supposed to go into the train. I could see, I could see from afar, I could see from afar that it was the same lady. She did not go into the train. She was just looking at me from afar. And then I, and I tried to, I tried to walk towards her. I looked again. She was not there. I realized it was the same lady. And so when I was a newlywed and I was, and I was, I was in my honeymoon. The first time I met the lady, it was in a honeymoon. I remember it was all connected. She was the same lady. And at another time, I went to a bus. This time I went into a bus. I went into a bus. I was about to pay and enter into the bus. And then I knew that I needed to get this bus. I needed to ride this bus. I could see, I could see a, a similar situation, a situ similar situation when another lady had asked for some help. I, I entered, I helped her as much as I could. I then went into the bus and go off to where I needed to go. But then I had the same realization of this same occurrence. I received some news. I received some news. Uh, Fifteen minutes later. 15 minutes later, actually, uh, it was of this lady who had warned me not to enter this bus. And, and if I had gone into that bus, I would have uh, been killed along with the rest of the passengers. But a similar looking lady had warned me not to go into the bus. And I realized it was always the same person. This time she had saved me from my, from my death, saved me from danger. So in, in this way, there were always ministering spirits, ministering angels. But if we reject God and we disobey God, in the eyes of God, we will be those who are very fickle and very unhonest, dishonest in the eyes of God. And then... And then God, and then God will work that spirit of deception.
And then God will say to the angel, okay, you go as a deceiving spirit, you do as you desire, so that they will be judged. So if, if this, if we were so powerful and so full of the Holy Spirit, so full of angels, yet we disobey and we do not go along with as God commanded us and in accordance with the commandment of the church, we will suddenly have the spirit of deception working against us and it will cause great trouble. And then it will work a great detrimental trouble because we delight, delighted in the, fal the falsehood and rejected the commandment of God He had been continually giving us. These are assisting and serving angels, but if we do not, re we do not remember the commandment of God, these will be changed. These will be changed. Let us look at 1 Samuel. Let us look at 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 22. First Kings, that is. First Kings 22. Verse 19. So, First Kings chapter 22, verse 19. Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the hosts of heaven, standing around him on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab into attacking Ramoth Gilead and going to his death there? One suggested this and another that. Finally a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. By what means, the Lord asked. I will go on and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets, he said. You will succeed in enticing him, said the Lord. Go and do it. So now the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours. The Lord has decreed disaster for you. Yeah. This is found in First Kings chapter 22, verse 19 to 22. And then you will know that uh, that the prophet Elijah was cast out by Jezebel and there was great wrath upon the family of Ahab. And so all the, all the spirits, the hosts had gathered before the angel of the Lord and they had a, they had a meeting. Who will, who will uh, work to send Ahab and his family to go to their destruction? And so one spirit offered one suggestion, one an another spirit offered another suggestion. And one one made this is this suggestion. I will be I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of the false prophets so that Ea will believe these false prophets and then they will and they will uh, lead Ahab and his family to destruction. And so God will change those angels. So since God had sent these angels that were originally sent to serve those who will inherit salvation, since they have been disobeying the commandment of God, the believers have been disobeying the commandments of God, and these angels will be changed. Although these were originally sent to help those who believe, those who believe, since you, you reject the commandment of God, I will have these angels sent to you changed and these will deceive you. So you go and do as you do. This is what God says to the angels. So you will no longer, for example, you will no longer work work and do this but you will succeed you will succeed in deceiving uh, the one I command you to deceive by being a lying spirit this is what God says
And some people, and this is this is similarly what happens in a government bureau in the various government government buildings all over South Korea. So, so this is happens by government procedures. We more we must all care, pay careful attention to those instructions. Otherwise, we will be sent to other places and it will result in a not a very favorable condition. So this happens on the governmental level in the, in the government buildings in South Korea, in Seoul. So it is a very difficult thing. And so God will work that deception. And so Isaiah 66. Isaiah chapter 66. So what is the use if we will believe in lies? What is the use if we will believe in lies? So those who doubt, those who doubt will follow those other people who doubt and God will continue to work this deception. Isaiah 66, verse 4. Isaiah 66, verse 4. So I will also choose harsh treatment for them and will bring upon them what they dread. For when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, no one listened. Then they did evil in my sight and chose what displeases me. And so did you not choose the, hard, the harsh treatment for yourself because you chose that abomination? Did you not yourself chose your own ways and your own abomin abominations to delight in? Then I will also choose harsh treatment for you and will bring upon you what you dread. And so God said, since you reject the commandment of God, since you reject the commandment of God, I will send a deceiving spirit to, I will send a deceiving spirit. And so you will experience the changed angels that were once originally sent to serve you. So in your life of faith, you do not know that you have a deceiving spirit within you. So all the descriptions, the descriptions about deceiving spirits are all found all over the Bible. Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 verse 24 Romans chapter 1 verse 24 Therefore God gave over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised Amen so this is even found in the New Testament for God himself will work that sinful desire in their hearts because they exchange the truth of God for a lie it says elsewhere since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done as is found in Romans chapter 1 verse 28 since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done verse 29 they have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless, although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death. 
they not only continue to do these very things, but they also approve of those who practice them. Let us read Romans chapter 1 verse 28. Furthermore, let us read it with some great strength in our stomachs. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, He gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God. He gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. And you, find, you will finally know why those people of the past, they had all uh, lived their life very diligently, they become very, very corrupt. You finally know why it was because of those deceiving spirits. If we fall into this trap, it is very difficult to come back. So Second uh, Thessalonians says, so the coming of Satan will be in a, the coming of the evil one will be coming in the ways of Satan displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles signs and wonders this is found in 2nd Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 9 again the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles signs and wonders and in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing they perish because they refuse to love the truth and so to be saved for this reason God sends them a powerful delusion so they will believe the lie and so all that all will be condemned who have not believed in the truth but have delighted in wickedness so they will not believe in the truth but they will delight in wickedness and then there will be no way there will be no way to go back into the truth having delighted in the wickedness by rejecting the commandment of God and they can only for the rest of their life of faith they will only have this deceiving spirit to hinder them because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. No matter how much we have received the Holy Spirit and the powers that are to come, this is the case concerning deceiving spirits. So Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we receive the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a faithful expectation of judgment and raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses as is found in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we receive knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left. Even if you have known the truth, if you have overcome the fleshly moral conscience and you have been saved by the truth, and yet even if you received all of this, yet you deliberately keep on sinning and throw away, throw away your grace you have received and throw away the truth and go back to moral conscience in condemnation and in slander you will uh, fall into perishment as uh, God said of the moment you eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil you will surely die so this is the this is the fruit that gives the knowledge of the fruit of truth and of the knowledge of good and evil this is religion Religion consists only in matters of the knowledge of good and evil concerning moral decisions of good and evil. This is what religion is. So we have buried all this by receiving baptism and immersion and we have gained life by grace. So the confession that I am a sinner has been gone, done away with and I only live through the grace of Christ. This is the truth. 
that we confess that we are sinners and now we have received grace. This is the truth. What God is so worried about, what God is so worried about is that of the moment that you the moment that you eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil you will surely die Genesis chapter 3 says and so if you eat of the knowledge of the, the fruit of good and evil you will know the truth and you will fall into great judgment so we are the, uh, we have the authority to judge between good and evil but this results in perishing because we had once eaten of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil and this knowledge of good and evil results in the religious sense of dealing with moral issues in the judging and the condemning and the feeling guilty so if we return back to these worthless matters of good and evil we will receive a great guilt and we will be condemned and we will result in our perishing because we refuse the truth the knowledge of the truth and rejected it there'll be no way back if we have received the knowledge of the truth if we have received this faith of the knowledge of the truth but reject it God will work that deception although the spirit itself can be saved the flesh might be judged so all your diseases and all your challenges there is all a progress in all these things so even a tiger, even a, a tiger, and uh, you are afraid of a tiger in the jungle. This is, uh, this is quite prevalent in South Korea. So if you are afraid of a bear, if you are afraid of a bear in the woods, in the deep woods, or in the mountains, you have never heard, you have never heard or seen of the bear, but you are, you are very aware of it, and you are you are shocked by even the smallest the smallest fear and they are easily frightened so it is very interesting about this issue and so already the angel that was sent to help them and so the angels already know the secrets of your heart and and uh, the spirit the angel is aware of the situations around them and you yourself in your flesh do not know about these situations but the angel will be sent to you and deal with you accordingly in how you react to the commandment of God you cannot escape this spiritual situation so the grace of God the grace of God and the opportunity of repentance you must live by grace and repentance but if you reject this you will fall into great trouble so this is what the Lord's Prayer teaches us about our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven now concerning you give us today our daily bread lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one this is all related to you and this is what the Lord is saying do not seek any other thing but you do this as I command you and so we must always pray that we will not fall into temptation and forgive us our debts as we have not forgiven as we have forgiven those who sinned against us this is what is it talking about it is talking about the grace of God and it's talking about repentance and yet we if we feel very guilty and and deal with issues about moral issues of good and evil about your moral conscience there is no there is no resolution left but you will be judged and you will perish this is why we must know the truth
So you must be led by the Holy Spirit. So you must be led by the Holy Spirit. This is very essential in your life of faith. God will send, send you the power of the Holy Spirit and you in your life of faith must choose this. But by your willing decision with your mind and your heart, you must choose to follow follow the way of the Holy Spirit or you can have the will not to choose. And although you have received the Holy Spirit, you are a person belonging to God and you have received the Word of God, you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, you have received the revelation of God and you fall into the desires of the flesh and there is no hope for you left and then God will work that deception in you. And some people say, you can only, you only have to believe, you can just believe and believe and that is it. Some people will say that. So we will perish if we do not know the truth. We are those who believe in Jesus. We have believed in Jesus since we have been saved. Let us, let us read Hebrews once again. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26. To verse 31. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we receive the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified him, and as who has insulted the Spirit of grace? We know him who said, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, and again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. What does God say to us? The Lord will judge His people. This is what He says. The Lord will judge His people. These are those who have already been saved. For example, the people of Israel who had been delivered and led through the Red Sea. Yet they had later on grumbled against Moses and had grumbled against his people. And those who had grumbled against him, they had all died. And even though they were led to the Red Sea and they were led by the angel of the Lord, yet they later grumbled against Moses and grumbled against uh, the authorities of God. So if we reject the words of Jesus and if we treat the treat uh, as unholy the blood of the sancti the blood of the covenant that sanctified him and trample the son of God underfoot how will God treat such people for the Lord has said it is mine to avenge I will pay and the Lord will judge his people the Lord will judge his people it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Hebrews chapter 6 now. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. Verse 8. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 8. But land that produces thorns and sisals is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end it will be burnt. Therefore, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundations of repentance from acts that lead to death, 
of faith in God, instructions about baptism, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And God permitting we will do so. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the words of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away to be brought back to repentance, because today thus they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting Him to public disgrace. If you have received ordination and uh, experienced the power of baptism and of the Holy Spirit and of the powers that are to come and you have tasted the grace of God and you fall away, there is no way to go back to God in repentance. For if they are to return to God back, back to God in repentance, they must crucify the Son of God all over again. And there will be no way to go back to God in repentance again. And then in verse 7, land that drinks in the rain after falling on it and that produces a crop useful those it is farmed receive the blessing of God. And so, it'll be almost impossible to do this. But they will greatly suffer. Let us say together, O oh my soul, let us live in my spirit. O oh my soul, let us live in my spirit. O oh my soul, live in your spirit. O oh my soul, live in your spirit. If you know about the truth concerning these deceiving, your deceiving spirits who deceive you, say Amen. These do not go inside your spirit, but they walk around your spiritual environment. These are those who have rejected the power of the Holy Spirit and the truth. If they do this, there is no hope for restoration, but there will only be judgment. If you make the determination, say Amen. So let us say together, Oh my, oh my spirit, let us follow the will of God. Oh my spirit, let us follow the will of God. Oh my spirit, let us follow the will of God. So when there was great trouble against this church, there were many factors that were working as deceptions to confuse the mind of the congregation. Yet I spoke to the leaders about this. And you have already become greatly corrupt and greatly deceived. So these kinds of people, and they were doing the works of demons later on. They were clearly doing the works that were very atrocious. And then the congregation followed these misleading leaders that had listened to these lies. And uh, this is the warning, this is, exact, this is the exact warning by God not to follow these foolish lies. Who is it that, who is it that exactly has become corrupt by the actions that you will, you will see clearly by their actions? So all our elders, all our elders and ordained deacons must be alert. They must be very careful and come to their senses. So, I talk to you, all the elders who are hearing me right now. Isn't it very shameful concerning the other elders that have done these evil things? Who is it that has dishonored the honor of Sangwak Church? So I speak to you elders in great uh, exhortation to all elders of churches to work as great, to work in great honor for the church and to keep alive and to come to your senses and not follow foolishness and uh, all this foolishness and these wicked wicked misleading lies has le led to led to the law courts in the laws of the world and uh, and yet I I myself am not going to stumble but we must never fall away from the truth we must never fall away from the truth. now let us stand up together we must become people of the truth. We must never be deceived. We must never hear the words of deception. The words of deception must never come into our ears. Lord! Lord! In my ears, may there never become a deception that comes into my ears again. May there never come those sounds of deception that mislead me ever again, O oh Lord. May we protect the truth and protect the church. Do not say this merely with the confession of your lips, but become a martyr. This I exhort in the name of Jesus Christ. 
So make the determination never to always make the determination to become a martyr for the sake of the charge and the truth. You must, you must not merely confess this with your tongue, but speak with clear and vocal expressions, whether it be speaking out loud in your prayers or speaking in tongues that the Spirit enables. Now let us all pray out loud with great strength. 